Welcome to this week's edition of The Blitz. On today's show, we will be joined by linebacker C.O. Moore as we look back at our game against Rutgers. And wide receiver Michael Smith will be joining us as we take a look ahead at our next opponent, the Temple Owls. And on today's Coach's Corner, we will be joined, of course, by head coach Paul Pascaloni as he answers questions from the fans. And wide receivers coach Matt Sersasimo, a Connecticut native, will be on to talk about homecoming. So thanks for tuning in. And now, The Blitz. It's now time for Coach's Corner with Coach P. Thanks for joining us on this week's show. Well, nice to be here. Now, coming off that loss to Rutgers, obviously a lot of frustrated faces after that last whistle. Can you give us your take on that game and what we need to do to rebound from it? Well, I thought the first half, uh, I thought we were really in there uh, and battling. Uh, I thought we played well on third down. I thought we played well on defense, uh, really, in the first half. And it's, it, it, at halftime, uh, I thought the guys were great. Uh, we were getting the game plan together and uh, came out. We got a turnover right away uh, on their, their kickoff return. Marquise Van stripped the ball very, very nicely. Uh, we had some opportunities uh, that we just didn't execute well enough. We didn't get the points when we had the opportunities to get the points. And uh, obviously, they're a good team. Uh, they played well. Uh, and uh, it was a frustrating loss for us. Uh, but I do think that uh, the guys competed hard and uh, really looking forward to getting back out there this week. And this week we do take on Temple, coached by a man you know very well, giving him his coaching start, Steve Adazio. Now, he was very emotional talking about coming back to Connecticut to play UConn and to play against you. Can you talk about facing off against him and some of the other former assistant coaches of yours? Well, uh, you know, Stephen is, uh, Stephen, we worked together at the, when I was at Western Connecticut, and uh, it was very clear that Stephen... Uh, was a high energy guy, uh, uh, always very enthusiastic, always very, very positive, uh, very clear that he would be a very, very good head coach uh, even way back then, had excellent success at Cheshire High School and then, of course, uh, at the uh, University of Florida uh, as an assistant coach, did well there. So it'll be fun. Uh, obviously, Steve's a Connecticut guy. He played at Central Connecticut. I believe he grew up in Farmington. Mm -hmm. I believe his dad was a professor at Central Connecticut. So uh, coming back home to Connecticut will be, be a, a great thing for Steve. Frank Leonard went to Central Connecticut, the tight end coach. You know, he's, he grew up in Wethersfield, so there's a lot of connections. Frank worked for us at Western Connecticut as well. So there's a lot, of, a lot of connections between our staff and their staff. A lot of Connecticut people know Steve uh, and know uh, coaches on their side, know coaches on our side. So it should be... Uh, an all Connecticut day at the rent. Very fitting for homecoming. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right, if you're ready, let's take on let's some fan go. questions. Yeah. All right, let's take a look. Hi, I'm Ian Flack. I'm a freshman from upstate New York, and I was wondering if you could coach a specific position here at UConn, what would it be? If I could coach a specific position, well, I've coached uh, all of them. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's for sure. Uh, I've always enjoyed, you know, the years I worked with the quarterbacks, I really enjoyed that. Uh, enjoyed the secondary a great deal. Always enjoyed the linebackers. I played linebacker and probably uh, in, my, in my coaching career, coached that position quite a bit. Uh, my last tour of duty with the Cowboys, I coached, I was the coordinator, but I coached the defensive line and I kind of really got into that. So I just like coaching. So it doesn't matter what position You'll it take is. Anyone. That's right. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the next question. Right. Hi, my name is Sean. I'm from Rhode Island, and I want to know what your favorite restaurant in the area is. Well, that's a good question. Uh, restaurant in the area, I'm assuming the area is Connecticut, not Rhode Island, I'm assuming. <laughs> I know there's a lot of good restaurants up on Federal Hill in Providence that's in Rhode true. Island, yeah. some really good Italian restaurants. If we stay with that flavor, it would probably have to be uh, down in the Worcester Street, New Haven area. Uh, Carbones is excellent here on Franklin Ave uh, from an Italian restaurant standpoint. I really like uh, gourmet hamburgers, so anywhere we can get a nice gourmet hamburger is really pretty good, too. All right, great. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the next question. Hi, I'm Kyle Houston. I'm a freshman from Parker, Colorado, and I want to know if you can meet any person living or dead, who would it be and why? Oh, boy, that's it. <laughs> meet any person living or dead. 
uh, and why? Uh, that would be, uh, that's, a, that's really an interesting question. Uh, I would probably, uh, you know, want to meet somebody uh, who has had a major, major impact, uh, you know, um, on our society, uh, on our country, you know, and, and maybe it would be one of the, the many great former presidents of the United States. Okay, very interesting question, a little bit of a twist. <laughs> yeah. Some great questions this week. Thanks so much for Thank being you. on. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. All right, fans, if you have any questions that you want to have answered, make sure you find the Huskies All Access crew, get your questions submitted and answered here on Coach's Corner. Now on Coach's Corner, we are joined by wide receivers coach Matt Sersosimo. Thanks so much for being on the show today. Thanks for having me, Emily. Appreciate it. Now looking back at our loss against Rutgers, obviously a tough one. It seems like we came out a little bit flat. What can you take away from that game moving forward? Well, every Big East battle that we have is going to be a hard-fought one. And being on the road, I think that we take, it, take away from that, um, that hard challenge that was being on the road and learn from the mistakes that we made in that game and push forward. You know, we've got a lot more challenges ahead as we move forward in the Big East Conference schedule. And I think that from a tough mental standpoint, that's something that we can really take away from that. And looking at your guys in particular, the wide receivers, obviously we lost two big targets in Kashif Moore and Isaiah Moore right, after last year. Right, yep. But looking at this season, Jeremy Davis, Nick Williams, Mike Smith have mm -hmm. really proven to be great receivers. Can you talk about their development and how you see them continuing to be an integral part of this offense? I think the, the way that they go about practicing really is the right way to go about their business. And, and what they've done from preseason camp to the development through the season I think has really been great. Um, they've really shown effort and enthusiasm and passion for the position, and I think they go about handling their business the right way on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I'm really looking forward to the second half of the season with them and what they potentially could bring to us from an explosive standpoint as well as you know, blocking and doing everything that they're asked of within their job requirement. And looking ahead to that second half of the season, three and three now, unable to put two wins together back to back. How important is it for you guys to be able to string together a couple of wins moving forward? I think it's I think it's big for our confidence. You know, I think that we had a little bit of a hiccup last week. Uh, obviously, everyone would have liked to start the Big East Conference off with a W. Um, but I think, like I mentioned earlier, you learn from those mistakes that you made and, and you move forward. And I think there's definitely lessons that can be learned there. Um, you know, we're going to work as hard as we can this week in practice and try to develop a great game plan and make sure the kids know Temple inside and out and uh, move forward and hopefully, you know, uh, things go our favor. And being that this weekend is homecoming weekend, we had to have you on as our guest, a Connecticut guy yourself, right. your wife, a former UConn lacrosse standout and then she was. head she, coach. She tells me she's the best athlete in the family. <laughs> a uh, little rivalry, yeah, very yes, nice. A little bit. And your father, of course, a very well-respected high school yes. coach in Connecticut, being truly the definition of a nutmegger. Talk about the sentiment surrounding this game. It's a very exciting situation. Um, Obviously, the games aside, you know, just the fact that a lot of family and friends will be there. I know a lot of the former players that I had the opportunity to work with and coach with here in my earlier part of my career here um, will be at the game as well. So hopefully I get a chance to see some of them and catch up with them. So looking forward to that. Uh, my father's actually being honored at halftime for the Hall of Fame. So that is just another part of, of the game as well. So really looking forward to the opportunity, not only for the second Big East game, of the year for us, but uh, everything that comes along with that, you know, trying to stay as focused as I can, you know, through all of that. Well, certainly an exciting weekend coming up. Thanks so much for being here today, Coach. Thank you for having me. All right, now let's take a look back at highlights from our last game against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights.
Joining us now is redshirt senior linebacker Sia Moore, who had nine tackles against Rutgers. Thanks for being here today, Thank Sia. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, obviously, a tough loss against Rutgers last week. You said after the game that the Huskies need to go back to the drawing board. What does that mean, and what was it that just wasn't working? Um, you know, just frust being frustrated about, uh, you know, losing the way we lost that game. Um, you know, uh, there was a lot of little things that we could we could have capitalized on that we really needed to. Um, and, you know, Coach harped on that throughout the week, and uh, that's how we try to practice. Um, but the main thing is you practice like how you practice, how we did last week, to show results during the game. And, um, you know, there was points in time I can say for myself and defense, like, you know, we, we could have did a better job. Um, so for us, we've got to go back to the drawing board to see what we need to do to be uh, consistent late in the games to, to win these games. And the defense only gave up one touchdown in the third quarter, forced Rutgers to two field goals. Can you talk about what you saw out of your defensive guys and what it is about this core that allows you guys to be as consistent as you are? A lot of times we just, we just believe, you know, no matter what, we got there ready to fight and uh, ready to go at it each and every play. Uh, we have a lot of resolve in our defense. And uh, with that, when you have resolve, you're able to believe that, you know, we can be put in any situation and come out of it. Uh, you know, we, we played pretty well, but at the same time, there was a lot of things that were uh, not seen um, that were crucial to the game. You know, they didn't get a score, but they had, a, I believe it was about a six and a half minute drive. Mm -hmm. That was really crucial as far as time goes to help the offense. For us, we got to do uh, whatever we can to help the offense. Uh, and you know, that's, that's giving them good field position, that's giving them enough time. Um, so we have to make sure we take care of each and every part of our game. And looking at that offense, their run game was essentially shut down by Rutgers. And with four interceptions, it seemed like they had a hard time kind of getting their rhythm. How do you see them responding this week in practice and making sure that that doesn't happen again? Well, I think they're going to they're gonna come out of practice this week with a chip on their shoulders. Um, you know, those are, those are all great guys. You know, I have a lot of friends on that, on that side of the ball, and they're going to work. Uh, nobody was happy with, uh, with that game and the feeling that you get after that game. Being that it's a rivalry game as well, and for it to be a 19-3 game, there was no, you know, uh, old-fashioned butt whooping where it was like, a, you know, a blowout score. We were all we were all in that game to the very end of it. Um, so they're going to go out with a chip on their shoulder because now it's homecoming, and it's a big week for us to to get a win. So I, I think those guys are going to be ready. All right, now let's talk about a couple of the exciting plays from the game. Shamar Steffen's blocked field goal, our first since 2004. And then on the opening drive of the second quarter, Marquise Vans forced fumble. Can you talk about watching those plays and the excitement seeing those guys coming up big? Well, when, they, when, uh, when Coach gave the call for the, for the block, I was looking at it, and I just was like, geez, like, Shamar makes a lot of things look easy because he's so big, you know. Um, but then when I saw the ball, I, I was like, oh, crap. I need to go. So I started running. Bleedy tried to scoop it, and I think he got hit. And then I just turned around and I fell on the ball. But I was like, it, it gave it gave us a, a, a spark, some some juice, some excitement, uh, and that was great. And then uh, uh, Tuki, I mean, not Tuki, I call him Tuki, Marquise. Uh, I mean, that was that was just a hell of a play. You know, um, he came back. That's 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 the type of plays we need. You know, guys who aren't going to quit on plays because he could easily just jog. But he busted his tail, got back, and he just violently ripped that ball out. And you like to see plays like that because those are young guys trying to make a name for themselves. Exactly. Teams. Certainly very exciting to watch. Yeah. Now, after the game, Bleedy said, fall seven times, stand up eight. You echoed that sentiment. How much faith do you still have in one another? I mean, uh, we, we've been together for a long time. Uh, you know, speaking on, like, Bleedy and a lot of the guys who are seniors, though, 16, and we've been through a lot. And uh, we know one thing, and that's never to give up. You know, it doesn't matter how dark the hole is, how dark the situation is. You don't give up, and you don't lose faith in the process. And that, that's what that's what helps us get up. And uh, we'll, we'll be all right. And uh, you just have to believe, because once somebody stops believing, it, it turns into a, you know, a bad cancer. And that's not what we need. We have six games left, and we can still be a great team. Well, I know we're all ready to see you guys come out with some wins in the upcoming games. Thanks so much for being here today, Thank Sia. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, now let's take a look ahead to our next opponent, the Temple Owls.
let's welcome to the show redshirt senior wide receiver Michael Smith, who had 52 yards receiving in our game against Rutgers. Thanks so much for being here today, Michael. Thanks for having me. All right, next up we have the Temple Owls. They're 2-2, two and two, new to the Big East. They lost to Maryland by 9, but they're coming off a win over USF. I know you saw the end of the game, up by 3. They blocked a field goal, and then the very next play had a touchdown to secure the win. Yeah. Seeing that fight in them, can you talk about what you'll need to do to get the victory over them? Oh, man, they're a very resilient team. Um, two years ago, uh, we lost to them up in Philadelphia, so uh, we both we all know that they're a very resi resilient team. So, uh, you know, we got to come out with a lot of energy on homecoming and uh, get the win. And defensively, they forced three turnovers against USF, but they still gave up 384 yards. How do you see our offense matching up against their defense? Um, if we protect the ball, uh, we win games. Uh, so um, that's all we got to do. If we don't turn the ball over, we win games. And uh, when we do, um, you know, games turn out just like our rookies do. All right, and on the offensive side of the ball, they scored five touchdowns four of them rushing. We know they like to run more than they throw. Yeah. With the defense continuing to be solid and showing some real bright spots, what do you think they are capable of against this team? They just got to continue to get better every day at practice and, uh, you know, they're going to come out and uh, stop the run. We have a really stout run defense, so um, that has to continue this week. And this week is homecoming, of course. Can yeah. you talk about the excitement surrounding homecoming, having a lot of former players come back and what you're looking forward to yeah, being uh, back at the rent? Homecoming is always fun. You know, you get to see some of the guys you play with. Uh, you know, um, it's nice seeing uh, old guys. It's almost like a family reunion. Well, I know we are all very excited to have you guys back in the rent for homecoming. Thanks so much for being here today, Michael. Thanks for having me. All right, the Huskies will take on the Temple Owls Saturday, October 13th at 1 o'clock. You can watch the game on ESPN3 or listen on WTIC News Talk 1080. Or you can just attend the rent at 1 o'clock on Saturday. There you go. Michael Smith wants you in those seats to so come on down to the rent. Thanks so much for tuning in to The Blitz. I'm Emily Noonan for Huskies All Access. We'll see you out there.